everybody. Namaste. So I don't know if you can tell I'm obsessed with hats lately. I'm really liking this black one. But I'm uh, trying to have a mixture of a light and dark. So I'm trying to lighten things up and, you know, draw people in. <laughs> you know what sells. Namaste. Um, welcome into my bedroom. I'm happy to be back at home. And I was inspired today to just put out a video in honor of my grandmother. Um, because she passed away around this time in early September. And there's something about the way that the light falls and the shadows um, cast on the sidewalks at this time of year when the sun is a little bit lower in the sky. And it just brings back the memories of um, her passing. And she was just such an amazing inspiration to all of us. She was a chef. So clearly that brought the family together all the time. She was the central figure of our family and um, meals were made with love and she was French Canadian and she upheld all of the traditions um, which also meant um, at large gatherings and large families a lot of drinking and um, my grandfather played the fiddle and um, generally good times but she was after all um, an alcoholic and one time she was babysitting my brother and I and my mom found her um, anyway. So she was told then and there that she had to make a decision and she quit drinking cold turkey. And I just, I tell this story and I love this story because it's just such an inspiration to me. Um, she did, however, turn more to her religion, which at the time was Christianity. Um, but I believe she was a mystic and she held on to the more Mother Mary feminine virtues and values um, of that religion and not so much the patriarchy. And she always used to um, try to pass on the uh, initiations and the ceremonies um, that were important in that religion and also the um, ceremonies, I guess, such as just the prayers before bed, and we always had these porcelain and angels and Mother Mary figures around. And um, When she passed, she had a massive heart attack and was in ICU for maybe 24 hours. But she passed with so much grace that the family that could gather around her at the time I was maybe 18 or 19. Um, she told something specific to each one of the grandkids and to each one of her children to remember her. She had a moment with everyone. Um, and we, so we all could carry that with us. And um, then on her funeral, we the six grandkids were the pallbearers and she loved bells, and um, she had this massive collection of bells. And when I carried, we were carrying the casket up the stairs of her church, the bells started ringing, and that was my first experience of whoosh, her spirit just went right into my heart. <laughs> it was such a magical moment of really feeling my grandmother's presence without her body. I was carrying her body she made it very clear to me that she was there with me and it took me a really long time to share that story but i held her really strongly in my heart after that moment on and she is one of my guiding angels um, and one of the reasons i still um, vouch for christianity especially the mystical parts of it because um, it's a it's a story steeped in the supernatural and believing in spirits and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Trinity. 
and all of this is very dear to my heart. Um, even though I don't believe in the religion aspect of it. So to me, spirituality, um, I went searching for the uh, explanation for the numinous experience, this experience of having felt the light within. Um, and it's found in Syrian mysticism, it's found in Buddhist traditions, it's found in Vedic philosophy. Um, that we carry the light within us, that we are a spark of the divine. It is not external to us, and spirits and energies interplay. Um, and in all of this is the magic and the mystery in which I invite people to leap into and have faith in when they're going through the dark times and challenges, and to believe in higher power, in... Um, the evolution of the soul in our innate spirit and truth, it really does help us grasp that there's something more to just this mundane world we live in. There's more to life, there's magic and there's mystery and some people are too scared to acknowledge it um, and in that fear we block it completely. And I've been there also, um, but I know that I'm lucky enough that in my family, we've all sort of held on to a certain faith, uh, even though that doesn't mean going to church and practicing religion. Um, we had large family gatherings when I was growing up, and one of my favorite cousins was the DJ and always played wonderful music, and he introduced this song to this artist to my brother and I when we were young and it made such an impact on our lives growing up <laughs> and um, it was always high vibe and joyous these family gatherings and this music was always sort of haunting in the background and Danielle Lenla has become my religion or <laughs> the sound of spirit to me I can hear Daniel Lenoir in all of his productions, and I love him deeply. So when I first heard this song, I was maybe 14, 15, 16, I don't know, but you know, playing with those ideas of light and dark and um, the mysteries of what's after life and the meaning behind life, and Daniel Lenoir just made the soundtrack of that and all those mysteries palpable to me. So we're going to do a Dr. Valley session to Daniel Lenoir and the Maker. Um, and um, in honor of my grandmother and her spirit and her guiding light to me and how it's just nice to have something to believe in in our darkest moments. It's what pulls us up out of the darkness. Um, and whatever that is to you, the maker is simply the creator, and we were all made in this energy of creation, which is the energy of love. And in my mind, in my heart, is where this energy of love is the most healing energy of all, and it will pull us up. It is the light within us. It will pull us out of any darkness. And so here's a nice practice peacefully in my nice purple room. Um, violet is the color of the crown chakra and opening to spirit, opening to the knowledge that there is more to life. <laughs> and the great unknown is where all the fun can be held and had and we might as well leap into faith and surrender and just go with the flow and see where life takes us. Then staying in the rat race and overly consuming toxic substances and media. <laughs> so we're staying in our peace and absorbing the light and really feeling the essence that is the maker. Lying flat, starting on the left, 45 degrees.
both legs at once, through center. Find your strength. for Savasana, really leaping into the unknown, leaping into our subconscious, not being afraid to go inside where the magic is, to be in the whole universe is. <laughs> Let yourself zone out, transcend your limitations into your heart space and look into your future with eyes wide open and have lots of faith. Anything is possible. We can all rise out of darkness. All the answers lie within you. So really stay in meditation as long as you need to. And really it's about transcending our limitations and really going beyond what we're told to believe, what our peers believe, what our partners believe, what our exes believe. Try to discern what you yourself believe. Try to get to your own personal truth. And don't force it on anybody else. All you have to do is know what's right for you. And we can stay in our comfort zones. We can create our nice, safe little world. But really, the fun is in leaping into the unknown, having faith in what's beyond, what's, what's more to have than just all of this. There's great mystery, there's synchronicity, there's magic, and there's oh many more senses we have yet to develop. So join me in the mystery and feel the energies. Know that there's more to life and your life will suddenly have more meaning and more magic and you'll feel less trapped in the dark and more enthralled with the magic and the light.